many times do you not feel heard by your spouse? Or actually, the harder question is... I don't is, want to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, that's the next, question. Next question. <laughs> if you're being honest, how often does your spouse not feel heard by you? Um, as we talked about, we did an episode, the last episode on active listening. Active listening does not come naturally. Mm -hmm. This is a tough one. And we're going to narrow down today on something that is huge. It's a huge part of what I do in my practice. And if you can do this well in your marriage, game changer. Absolutely. Reflective listening. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most powerful tools that we can put in our communication toolbox. Yes, and it one is. that you will find you use all the time mm -hmm. in lots and lots of different situations. Yes. We are Brian and Elisa Hope, and with a lot of years as a pastor. And a lot of years as a mental health therapist. And even more years being married to one another, we have hopes for your marriage. Here we go. Reflective listening. Mm, that's a good phrase. Reflective listening. Yeah. Okay. Listen up. Listen up. And you will hear more about it. <laughs> okay. Boom, boom. Why is it such a big deal? So we're going to get to what it is here in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to spend just a minute talking about why it's such a big deal and what it does for your spouse. Why are we camping out on this? And I am such a champion of this one. So I really hope that this is something that you can listen to, listen to with your spouse, come back to, listen to again, because man, this can do more for your spouse than I think we ever, ever recognize. Absolutely. So reflective listening, the first thing it does is it communicates to your spouse that you care that you value them, that what they have to say matters to you. Their thoughts matter, their feelings matter. It is the biggest deposit into who you are matters. Mm. It also helps your spouse feel seen and heard in a world where honestly, we often don't. Mm -hmm. We live in a world of sound bites. We live in a world of argumentation, mm -hmm. of contention, uh, of debate of cynicism and critical words. And mm -hmm. honestly, more often than not, we yeah. exist in an ongoing survival mode. Yeah. Yep. Fast paced, busy. Mm -hmm. And what that leads then to is this constant sense of hyper arousal. Our nervous system is activated all the time. So when we bring the gift of reflective listening to our spouse, it allows them to just be for their nervous system to settle, to be and not always have to do and position. It reminds them that who they are as a human being has value. Yeah, I think the word that comes to mind as you talk about that is reflective listening is disarming. Yes. It, it just, if, uh, if it was fire, if all the contention and the argumentation of the world was fire, then it just pulls all the air out of that so it can't burn. It's reflective listening tills that soil to make it receptive for the water and the nutrients and the roots to really do their thing. Uh, it's, a, it's such a peace bringing mm -hmm. tool in the communication toolbox. Mm -hmm. It provides this space uh, for non-judgmental, uh, safe, um, comfortable, processing of thoughts and feelings, mm -hmm. of solutions, of reasons, of experiences, all those things. Reflective listening does that for your spouse so mm -hmm. that you sort of, if you can imagine, sort of walling off the rest of this world that is almost always against us and say, well, right here, right now, let's you just do your thing. Yeah. You can just work through this with me. I can do mm -hmm. this. I'm going to help you through this. Mm -hmm. That's yep. what it does. It's awesome. Yeah. Listening well through uh, this reflective listening is clutch when it comes yes. to conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. Not just the conflict that's out there that we deal with, but the conflict that arises within marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, re reflective listening will do so much for allowing conflict to be something that you can leverage for the strengthening of your marriage rather than something that you try to avoid because it just does nothing but bad things. We've got a lot to say on yeah. conflict later mm -hmm. in later episodes. And reflective listening, if, if you can well imagine, mm -hmm. because it takes all the uh, 
the heat away from that and all the danger away from it, it then becomes a tool for intimacy mm -hmm. and trust as you trust your spouse and your spouse trusts you mm -hmm. uh, to work through these things. And reflective listening is, is going to be awesome yeah. in yeah. that regard. wouldn't believe just how often I hear in my office, like if they would just listen or hear me, I, I don't, so much conflict comes from that place. And boy, if we just spent more time, as Brian was talking about soil, just thinking how when we try to put plants in soil that we've not worked, it's just dead and dry, the plants never make it. And if we in our communication spent more time with reflective listening, we wouldn't have to work so much on the conflict resolution skills. Because if we put energy into practicing this, then a lot of that is avoided before it ever starts. Yeah. So yes, this is huge to be able to create that foundation. Like you're looking at foundation of communication. This is the big This is a big one. Yeah. Big one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so what is it? What is it? Let's get to this. <laughs> let's let's just start with number one. <laughs> foundation of reflective listening is being quiet. And it's Sad I even have to say that, but it's so true because mm. we naturally want to jump in with our thoughts and ideas and we interrupt and it's not helpful. So active, reflective listening starts with being quiet until the person is done talking. Mm -hmm. Number two. Mm -hmm. It's paying attention then while you're being quiet. Mm. <laughs> and it's easier to do while you're being quiet too. Paying attention to what the person is saying, what your spouse is saying what they're not saying, how they're saying it, the tone of voice, and their body language. So you're taking in all the cues. And I just wanna say this comes more naturally with practice. So don't get overwhelmed with that. But it is, again, being really present and, and paying attention to all of those things that are getting communicated. And then it's asking questions that are open-ended, that are curious. It is coming in not assuming that you already know what they're going to say, or you already have the answer, or you know all the assumptions that we bring to that. But it is assuming I don't know yet, or maybe my spouse doesn't even know. And so by asking those questions, again, I'm giving them space to explore this and discover. So being quiet, paying attention to all of those things, and then just asking, curious questions and number four is to reflect like a mirror mm -hmm. uh, what you're observing <clears throat> which again is keeping it very them other focused, focused other yeah. focus so you're mm -hmm. you're saying something like I, I hear you saying that you're fine but I'm seeing you and your shoulders mm -hmm. are slumped your eyes seem very sad mm -hmm. it seems like you're carrying something really heavy mm -hmm. today while while you're working through this and that concern me and you're, re you're reflecting back to them what mm -hmm. I hear you saying uh, or it seems like, and so you're reflecting like a mirror. Mm -hmm. back then, hence the phrase, yes. reflective listening. <laughs> and then number five, and this might especially be helpful for us husbands, what? ask what they need from you before offering what you think yeah. they need from mm -hmm. you. Ask in a way that is truly inquisitive and caring. Is yeah. there anything that you need from me that would be helpful? Yeah. How can I help? Is there a way that I can help? Yeah. Those are five good descriptors of reflective listening yeah. because we have default modes that we will mm -hmm. fall into. And husbands, well, big and wives too. And wives yeah, too. We, need we all this. do this, yes. but we tend to slip into a fix it mode mm -hmm. because we we love yeah. we love our spouse and they're struggling and they're trying to communicate a need and maybe you see it right away and you're jumping into hero mode and you're going to fix yeah. it you're going to answer it you're going to solve it mm -hmm. and then move on and that fix it mode can oftentimes elicit a response of defensiveness yeah. uh, resentment shutdown and then it the cycle goes you can see mm -hmm. the cycle start with wow i'm just trying to help and you don't even care and blah yeah. blah blah and it's confusing it's and very confusing yeah. yeah so that's one of our default modes is to fix it we want to be very careful to stay away from that yeah Another default mode is self-referencing. Uh, we very quickly, because we think we've got great ideas or our experience relates to what our spouse is talking about, uh, we will boomerang the conversation from them right back to us. Mm -hmm. And you brought up a good point earlier when we were talking about this regarding over empathy. Oh, that, was that I think one of the, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the causes for our excess 
in self-referencing is we live in this age right now that has so overvalued empathy that we think that means we distort want, it we distort mm -hmm. it i'm trying to put myself in another person's shoes to to show them that i care and so when they express something we immediately self-reference and, mm -hmm. and that's a distortion of or or a misrepresentation of genuine empathy but that's yeah. happening a lot these days yeah and then the third default mode is avoidance <laughs> we think well I, if i just pretend that everything is okay, then it's okay. So I just don't need to go there and they'll figure it out. Uh, sometimes it's because we don't feel comfortable ourselves just sitting in powerlessness. It feels powerless to sit with somebody when they've got maybe very intense emotions and we're listening well, reflective listening, and we don't necessarily understand the value of that. And we feel helpless because we're not immediately jumping to a solution mm. um, or just being able to tell them what we think they need to hear or do. And so that just feels uh, counter to what we feel like is productive. And so we just avoid the whole thing together. <laughs> so beware the default modes yeah. that we can, the, the ruts that we can slip in, slip into. Yeah. yeah. So reflective listening, it takes practice. This is not something that you're going to get right away or ever. Hmm. Like it's something I do professionally and yet I have to practice it all the time and I fail Brian in it often. So it takes practice. It takes humility. It takes patience. It takes sacrifice because it's getting out of ourselves and being present for our spouse mm. in the mess of it all sometimes. But the reason we do this is because we have a savior that is the perfect active, reflective listener to us. He invites us to come to him with wherever we're at, whatever mess we're in, and pour our hearts out to him. And he actually states in scripture that he hears us before we even speak. He knows what we're going to say. He is so present with us, so patient with us. And so in following his footsteps, this is something that even though we don't do great, that as we are his and we are uh, filled up with that from him, that we can offer in part to our spouse, trusting that God's gonna continue to give us that new character that can be a, an effective, reflective listener yeah. in our marriage. That's good, That's good news. Yeah, it's yeah. very good news. Mm -hmm. So, a few quick handles for you to start yep. your reflective listening practice. Today. Today uh -huh. and throughout the week especially. Yeah. Number one, number one. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> no, no, no. That's number two. Oh, number, number two. One number one is start easy. Start with yeah. an easy scenario. Yeah. Don't jump into a crisis, but like, so you went to the store. How was that? Reflective listening, begin. Yeah. Start with an easy scenario. Yeah. Number two. Is be quiet. Like just today practice not saying anything until your spouse is done talking. Mm -hmm. um, just wait until there is silence to interject. And then number three. Is ask a question. Ask at least one question mm -hmm. yes. before you make your statement or response. Yeah. So I think that's gonna be great. Try that today yep. and, and see what happens. And keep it up. Uh -huh. And we'll see you <laughs> next time. Bye-bye.